Good morning. Dear St. Peter family, we are aware of some problems with our live stream, and we're actively working to resolve them. Some were fixed yesterday, and the rest will be addressed this week. It's our goal uh, to resume our physical worship services next weekend. Uh, however, please watch for an announcement to that. The best place uh, to find those announcements would be at our website, and if you're watching the live stream, you know how to get there. Uh, stpeterhemlock.org. Uh, we'll post other announcements on other uh, platforms as we uh, get them, but that will be the primary one, the website. And uh, even though we're not holding physical services this weekend, pastoral care is continuing. Please continue to contact us if you or others are in need. Uh, we just found out this morning that uh, visits to the Midland Hospital are not possible. Um, they're not letting the pastors in there, but we will continue our service uh, where we are able to. Our principal is meeting with our teachers tomorrow to evaluate the best ways to provide learning for our students during this time, and some steps have already been in place for continued learning. And above all, God will see us through this as we fix our eyes on Jesus. And so we pray. Spare your people, O Lord, preserve us from this and every illness. Give healing and strength to those who are sick. Protect those who care for them and grant us steady minds and calm hearts in the face of fear. You have borne our infirmities in this human flesh and purchased us with your own blood. Keep us in this faith and embolden in us love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our order of service is uh, also on our website. We'll be following Divine Setting 4 with some revisions. And we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we're gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. And Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. And as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And the Lord be with you and also with you. And we pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is recorded in Exodus chapter 17. All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped at Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Now, therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? And why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt 
to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst. So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and the water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the, the elders of Israel. And he called the name of that place Massa and Meribeth, because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The epistle is recorded in Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we've been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will a righteous person die, though perhaps a, for a good person one might dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. In the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. So Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well's deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty forever. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come and draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You're right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what we do not know, and we worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, 
I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. This is the gospel of the Lord. And we make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before I start the sermon, I just want to tell you a little story from my childhood. And it's just this, is that uh, my great-grandma Sadie and my grandpa Hayes, my mom's dad, my mom's dad would always huddle everybody in the root cellar when there was a little dark cloud in the sky because a tornado was coming. Grandma Sadie would not go in the root cellar. Grandma Sadie sat out there on the porch according to my mom, rocked in her rocking chair and said, if the storm's coming, it's going to take me right here on the porch. So there is a little truth between what Grandpa Hayes said, overly cautious, and Grandma Sadie just being kind of cavalier and just let come what may. But today, we and always, we have the peace of the Lord and to be still. Hear these words from Scripture. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. The other boats were with him, and had a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. He was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care? We are perishing. He awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? So great mercy and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord, from our Savior Jesus. Amen. So Mark, he records a time when Jesus' disciples thought that he didn't care what happened to him. The disciples, who had been on this lake many times before fishing, said to Jesus in the midst of this storm, don't you care that we're dying? Jesus then says, peace, be still, and a great calm happened. And Jesus asked them, why are you so afraid? Do you still not have faith? So the disciples, are, they're still terrified. They're saying to one another, who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? And Jesus says to them, if you really knew who I was, you wouldn't be afraid. And so a correct view of Jesus is vital to a correct response to Jesus. Where I end up, you're going to end up, and if you follow me, you might well die. When's the last time that we told somebody that they might end up dead if they followed Jesus? Rather, people oftentimes are left with the thought that if they follow Jesus, they're going to experience good life on earth, heaven on earth, as a matter of fact. If you believe in Jesus, your life will be so much better and that Jesus take control and you'll be delivered from heartache and sorrow and financial problems and and enjoy the good life. Well, we know that's really not true uh, from our own existence, our own experience, but also we have Job's experience. God allowed the devil to tempt and test Job's faith. His children were killed. 
He lost his wealth. His body was infested with sores. He couldn't find relief. His wife advised him to curse God and die. And then Job's friends come to him to comfort him. So they spend seven days with Job, and they don't utter a word because they saw how great his suffering was. And when they began to speak, they spoke without knowledge. And Job spoke without knowledge. In chapter 38 of Job, the Lord speaks. Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm, and he said, Who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Who shut up the sea behind the doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, this far you may come and no farther, here is where your prow waves halt. So Job spoke without knowledge. Job's friends spoke without knowledge. God says so. The disciples, they spoke without knowledge. Lord, don't you care if we're dying? And we as well can speak without knowledge, like Job, like Job's friends, and like the disciples. We see somebody suffering, and we, we blame the person. They brought it on themselves. We, we see family problems, and we ask why. We see sickness, and we see disease, and we see death, and, and we think, you know, I really should be immune. That happens to people who don't have a strong faith. And then the people ask, well, how can God allow people to starve? How can God allow people to abuse their children? How can God allow abortion? How can God allow euthanasia? How can God allow my spouse to die just after I retired and all set to enjoy retirement? How could God allow my child to be born with a birth defect? How could God allow me to be childless? And we have our own situations to put in there. And it is very true. Everybody has a story. And when we go through those times of difficulty, it seems to us at times that, that Jesus is sleeping and doesn't really care for us. If I were God, things would be different, we think. But words spoken without knowledge reveals really more about us. We are the cre creation. We are not the creator. And our intelligence is limited, it's finite, and we know about God through his revealed word. And this is what we know, that he loves us, he cares for us, and yes, he does protect us. He wants the best for us. And he doesn't punish us as our sins deserve. Instead, God, Son, has taken the wrath for sins into himself. That being through spirit work faith given to us in the waters of baptism, we have the righteousness of God covering us. And so when you think about does God care or wonder or not if God's protecting you, we can look to the cross and see there with eyes of faith God's love for you. That when God the Father looks at you, he sees Jesus, his perfect life, his innocent death, his resurrection all given to you. And God the Father is at peace with you, not seeking to damn you for your sins because God the Father is at peace because of Jesus with you, washed in the blood of the Lamb. And that's protection, that's concern, and that's love. So if we ever feel that Jesus is asleep, we can see Jesus or in God coming powerfully in his word in sacrament. Here is the reason why it's so important for us to worship corporately, to be together, to encourage one another as we are around word and sacrament. This morning we are doing that via the internet, but speaking peace 
be still, where God continues to let us know that all is well because of Jesus. God's promise to you and to all Christians is just this. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Hear these powerful words. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now the peace of God which does indeed transcend all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds stayed on Jesus, are crucified, are resurrected, our ascended and returning Savior. Peace be still. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the church of all believers, that as she journeys through the wilderness of this life, she may drink only from the pure fountain of God's holy word and not seek nourishment from other sources. Lord, in your mercy, for all pastors in Christ, that they may faithfully preach the word of the Lord, rightfully dividing law and gospel, that all who hear their preaching may hear in faith and believe it. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who are troubled in their consciences or burdened by the memory of their sins, that they may be comforted by the peace we now have with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us while we were still sinners, justifying us before God. Lord, in your mercy. For all who are here gathered today to worship via the internet, that we may recognize that the one true God is present among us to give us his gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation as we worship him in spirit and truth. Lord, in your mercy. For the government, that we might be blessed with wise and capable leaders who seek to humbly serve those who have chosen to give them to govern, that we might be granted peace and prosperity. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who are preparing to be pastors, teachers, deaconesses, and other church workers, that they may be blessed in their preparations and that others may be called to the mission of proclaiming Christ the Messiah. Lord, in your mercy. For all those undergoing temptations or doubts about their faith, that they may be strengthened and upheld by the power of the Holy Spirit through the Lord's word and worship. Lord, in your mercy. For the sick, suffering, and recovering, we remember Jim Bloomer, Harry Klaus, Lynn Hilbrandt, Paul Moeller, and Judy Zastro, that you may be with them and grant them he healing and help as it pleases you, and that they may be comforted by God's love poured into their hearts through the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, grant your continued blessings, O Lord, to your servant Russ Russell Mallory, to whom you have granted length of days in this present life. May he know your loving kindness, abide in the confession of your care and protection, and in all things give you thanks. 
Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, at the creation of Adam and Eve, you instituted and blessed marriage as the union of a man and woman and commanded that it be held in honor by all. Grant your blessings to all married couples, especially to Jordan Hingston and Paige Bredenitz, as they were married yesterday. We pray that their love together may be blessed with wisdom, purity, self-sacrifice, and love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, having prayed for your guidance, we have chosen a teacher for this congregation. May the choice of your people please you. Guide the deliberations of Mr. Anthony Walter with your Holy Spirit that he may desire to do your will and be ready to serve where needed in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. And for those who mourn, that they may be comforted for the blessed hope of the resurrection to eternal life for all who are baptized into Christ's death and resurrection, and that the Lord would keep us all steadfast in the true faith until we join all the saints around his throne in his eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Spare your people, O Lord. Preserve us from this and every illness. Give healing and strength to those who are sick. Protect those who care for them. And grant us steady minds and calm hearts in the face of fear. You have borne our infirmities in this human flesh and purchased us with your own blood. Keep us in this faith and embolden us in love. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart. That by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord look upon you with his face and be gracious to you and look upon you with favor and grant you peace.